welcome. This is our second round of pirate chat today for Love Independence Day. This is us connecting with you. And uh, today it, in this uh, session, we'll be talking with our arts and letters division uh, to get kind of a feel for what's going on in that department, what updates there are. Um, and feel free if you have any questions, you're welcome to use the Q&A on Zoom if you're on there. You can uh, choose to wave at us on Zoom if you have a question. And if you are on Facebook Live, feel free to drop a question in the comments. Um, if there's anything we don't get to, we will reach out to you and uh, we can follow up with you on that. So um, we will try to get to as many of them as we can. Um, I, for all intents and purposes, am your MC. So I am Megan Moore. I am Director of Recruitment and Public Relations at Independence Community College. And this is an honor to get to uh, bring a piece of our campus to you today. So uh, we'll go around and do some introductions of our Arts and Letters Division. So uh, let's go ahead and start off here. Uh, Paul, would you mind kicking us off? Uh, sure. Hi, uh, my name is Paul Molnar, and I'm an associate professor of theater here at Independence Community College. Great, thank you. Marge, how about you? Hi, um, I'm Marge Orlowski. I'm the Associate Professor of Communication and Leadership at Independence Community College. Thank you. And Larry, let's hear from you. Hello, I'm Larry Markevich. I am the Director of Instrumental Ensembles at the college, finishing my second year here. Great, thanks, Larry. Uh, how about you, JD? I'm J.D. McGuire, Associate Professor of Visual Arts. Uh, happy to be here. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Paige. Let's hear from you. Unmute. There we go. Hi, I am Dr. Paige Petruca, Associate Professor of Theater here at ICC, and I am finishing up my second year like Larry. Very good. Alexis, let's hear from you. Hi, I'm Alexis Lauder, and I am an associate professor of vocal music. Wonderful. And Bridget, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Bridget Carson. I'm an associate professor of developmental English and Jill of all traits. <laughs> that is an incredibly accurate description. <laughs> Jill of all trades is absolutely right. Okay, well, thank you uh, again for joining us. So let's go ahead and start off. Um, so theater department, would you guys like to kind of tag team that or join together if you'd like and uh, give us some updates on what's going on, just some general department information for you and uh, I'll let you take it away. Sure, I'll, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, as I said, uh, this is, I'm finishing up my second year here at ICC and I'm really loving it here. I I'm very excited about the things that Paul and I have to offer our students. Um, we offer such a variety of courses here that a lot of our competitors do not. While Paul and I both focus on acting, I also specialize in playwriting, script analysis, and dramatic lit and directing. And Paul, he is amazing in that he also teaches voice and diction and movement and stage combat. So just, uh, just such a nice variety of courses that we have here at ICC. And another thing that our school does is we participate in the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival, which is a regional festival. And then those winners then go on to nationals at the Kennedy Center in Washington. So we are thrilled to be a part of that. And the nice thing is, is about this, um, festival is it focuses not just on acting but also on directing and playwriting and dramaturgy and all of the design elements and so we're proud to be participants with KCACTF. Paul? Hi, uh, thanks Paige and thanks everyone out there for being here. Um, yeah, so this is my first year at uh, Independence Community College. Uh, I spent the last 20 years um, living and working in New York City and around the regions, and I'm thrilled to be here. This is an incredible uh, uh, group of people that I get to interact with every single day. 
Um, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited, really happy that, uh, that everything is moving uh, in a wonderful direction. We have, um, as Paige touched on, we have um, uh, acting, voice, movement, stage combat, directing. The program that, that, that we are crafting here at this community college is unlike any other program um, that I've seen at the community college level. It really is the prep um, for, for moving forward. And I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I'm an eager uh, uh, participant in, in this, and I think it's a really wonderful uh, uh, example of the community that, 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 that we surround ourselves with. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you for sharing about that. Um, so, and we are a growing program. We're excited uh, for the fall that's coming up. Um, we have a wonderful group of students. We've got some that we're saying goodbye to that that's a heart tug. Um, and I know our, our theater department, that's, that's, oh, your students make it. Um, so the ones that are leaving, we will miss and uh, we're excited for the new students coming in. So um, there is a mystery woman on the, uh, the chat right now because I did not introduce her. So uh, Heather Midosh, I would like for uh, her to be introduced. She is our division chair um, and she can also give you a little bit of an introduction and overview and an introduction for one of our new uh, faculty that are on staff as well. So feel free. Uh, um, Hello everyone, I'm Heather Midosh. Uh, I'm a professor of English and I am fortunate enough to be able to serve as the division chair for arts and humanities, formerly arts and letters. We have, um, we have, a time of really fantastic opportunity and growth in front of us here and it's a challenge and an opportunity to which ICC I think is singularly well positioned not just through our phenomenal faculty but through our emphasis on arts and flexibility so in that we have this in fantastic staff and I'm very very lucky in the English department to uh, be accompanied by Professor Rafal Rudlinski uh, who is uh, also teaching comp and literature but then also creative writing with us and we have an exciting writing program that I think people are going to see more and more in the community in in coming years and, and coming semesters as we continue to move forward. Great. Thank you, Heather. And um, we are so happy to have her at the helm with this. Um, along with that, another key part of our uh, fine arts, our arts and letters division, is our navigator, Cameron Midland. So, uh, Cam, can I give you a second to introduce yourself and explain what it is that you do? Absolutely. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cameron Midland, and I, again, am a navigator for the fine arts department, as well as a portion of general students and walk-on athletes. Uh, a little bit of what I do is uh, I, I help students with their admissions process, uh, including financial aid, filling out the FAFSA, obtaining documents such as transcripts and test scores. Uh, after that, we look at academic interests for the student to try and find out what, what it is they want to do. Uh, we work with them and build a degree plan, cater to them. Uh, we work on scheduling, finalize enrollment. I also offer testing for the AccuPlacer. Uh, this is used to uh, determine placement for math as well as uh, English courses. Uh, throughout the semesters, we do grade checks uh, every five, eight, 12 weeks. Uh, check the grades and attendance, make sure students uh, let them know if they need to utilize the tutoring center, point to resources that are available on campus. Uh, and we try and keep all students on track to graduate by reviewing their degree plans uh, on a regular basis. I also coordinate with area universities as well and have them come out and talk to students. They usually set up tables, booths, uh, so the students can, can meet with transfer coordinators at those institutions. Uh, and if you guys have anything further, uh, feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Great, thank you, Cam. Uh, Absolutely. Cameron is a first line of defense for our students. He is a first line of contact. Um, great with general information. If you are needing something, uh, he's wonderful to help and find that out. Um, so we appreciate having his guidance with uh, our students in this division. It's fantastic. 
So um, let's see here. Let's go ahead. Uh, JD, do you want to give us some insight into the visual arts program, please? Yes, thank you, Megan. Um, <clears throat> I also started here in the uh, fall with uh, Professor Paul Molnar. And uh, I taught for 10 years in New York, New Jersey, and a little bit in Missouri before coming here. I came here, the department was the storage. So we completely rebuilt the curriculum, completely rebuilt the department. We currently have four of our majors with the expectation of doubling that knowledge, I think, probably happens. Um, we did put on the first annual art majors exhibition. It was in March, and we did two workshops at the Fab Lab and also had the Kansas City Arts to come visit us. Um, my priority is for the students to enjoy our class. I want them to like the class, I want them to come to the class. If they decide that that's what they want to pursue for a profession, we are very much going to build an excellent portfolio for them to transfer to a top institution. Thank you. Thanks, JD. And um, he's wonderful with collaboration. Um, we had, I believe, the Kansas Art Institute that was in um, that had a meeting with him and some of our students. So um, just finding those springboard opportunities for our students, uh, JD is at the forefront with that. So we're really appreciative of that. And he's a working artist on top of that, like uh, many of those in our division, which is exciting. So, all right, let's um, move into our uh, music division here, if we could. So, uh, Dr. Larry, would you mind giving us an introduction into band? Some of you may already know this face from around town. Um, feel free to introduce yourself and your program. Once again, yeah, this is Dr. Larry Markevich. Uh, can you hear me okay? Good. So, I guess I want to share a little bit about uh, the four semesters I've been here, and being that today is Love Independence Day, is that my goal when I arrived was to immerse music into the community on a higher level. And most of you have seen our, um, one of the things we can supply at Independence Community College that no other community college can do are full-size ensembles. I've created a 50-member community campus concert band. I've created a full-size big band, which plays often at Turbos uh, several times a year and plays out in the public. And we are launching a full-size symphony orchestra in the fall. I'm very excited about that. So we have full-size ensembles uh, that we combine community members with students and local high school music educators. Speaking of that, loving independence and loving community, I've created relationships with the seven surrounding school districts uh, where I work with all the music teachers, whether they be uh, instrumental band, instrumental orchestra. Um, and in the past year, I've conducted uh, four honor groups, two that we hosted at the college, an honors orchestra and an honors band, in which our professor, uh, Bridget Parson, premiered two of her original compositions at. And I also conducted two humongous middle school honors groups. I conducted the Tri-Valley Middle School Honors Orchestra in Fredonia, which had 150 students back in March. And I also conducted the uh, Independence High School um, Middle School Honors Orchestra, which had students from as far away as Fort Scott, and that numbered about 175 string players in one place at the same time. So uh, with all that, what we're trying to do is lay the groundwork to build a dynamic um, instrumental department and create customized journeys for all our students. Our, our goal is to cater to the non-major as well as to the music major. And we offer scholarships in every discipline and every level of commitment. Um, you've also probably seen our athletic bands. We play at the Neil Locke Parade, play at the Veterans Parade, and we're always at all the sporting events. So uh, we're, we're enjoying our time here. It takes about seven years to build a full mature music program. And at the end of year two, we're right on pace for where we need to be. And the reason for that is I have never worked with a better group of administrators and colleagues and support that like we have here at ICC. I come from the New York, New Jersey metro area. I worked in arts administration. I taught public school. And I can tell you that independence is fertile ground for the arts and the place to be. Great, thank you so much, Larry. Uh, we're excited to see where this goes. It is off to a wonderful start, uh, just two years in. So um, we, we can't wait to see what happens and to hear that symphony orchestra in the fall. That's exciting. All right, um, Alexis, let's go ahead and talk with you for a minute. Alexis is kind of from our backyard here, an Emporia State grad, and uh, we are so happy to have her here. So go ahead and talk with us about the vocal department. 
Yeah, so I'm from pretty close by. I'm from Humboldt originally, did my undergrad and master's degree both at Emporia State. Um, and I'm actually kind of unusual as far as directors go in that instead of coming from a conducting and or education background, my educational background is um, as a performer and um, in the field of historical musicology where I specialize in uh, music by women composers in particular and also um, particularly women composers of color. Um, so my overarching life goal, I guess, for um, for my teaching, conducting, and um, research and writing um, is to diversify the repertoire. Um, the the um, Western art music canon is not, is very, as I call it, andro-eurocentric. And um, a lot of us are um, kind of working to break that mold right now. I just started at ICC. Um, back in August, this fall semester, and what a doozy of a of a first year with all that's going on. Um, we have uh, two. Um, we have when I came the first semester, we had two ensembles on campus. Um, we have Corral, which is an a non auditioned ensemble, which means if you like to sing. Um, but don't necessarily um, feel like you're a very good singer or read music, you can just show up and sing. We also have Chamber Singers, which is an auditioned group. Um, so it's a little bit, m the repertoire is a little bit more uh, challenging um, than what Corral performs. And uh, in February, we started up a community choir um, which of course, unfortunately had to be, um, will be coming back as soon as uh, campus is able to open back up. Uh, we also offer voice lessons to uh, both music majors and non-music majors, um, which is really my, um, is really when I'm in my element. Um, a good thing I think about our uh, music program right now is that because we are a smaller program, there is um, much more opportunity for to spotlight individual students. Um, for instance, back in November, we had a kind of pirate pride um, concert where we sang sea shanties and arrangements about of uh, songs about the ocean, and every single one of my students that was taking voice lessons that semester, was able to perform a solo song that fit into that theme of music about uh, the ocean, which is an opportunity that um, it's a great thing if you are um, pursuing a career in music, having opportunities like that to put on your CV are um, can be really challenging to come by at a, um, at a larger school. Um, and our program is um, is a mix of music majors and non-music majors. Um, one of the big, uh, one of the saddest things I think is that um, so many people sing in choir in high school, and then afterwards they just stop singing altogether. They don't sing in a choir ever again for the most part. Um, and a lot of people that do go on to college think that since they're not a music major, they can't uh, be a part of the choirs, but that's not really true. And we also offer scholarships to non-music majors. Um, so if you're interested in that, be sure to contact me. Um, we have an online audition form on the website now, and I'll turn it over to whoever's next. Great, thanks Alexis. That's a great background on uh, what you can expect in the vocal program. Uh, the scholarships are available. So even if that is not something uh, that you're wanting to pursue as a career, um, books and tuition is on the table in our department. 
And um, if there's something that you want to experience and maybe even get a scholarship for, but you want to study something else, uh, that's, that's absolutely an option. Um, so I do want to remind that if you do have any questions for anybody that's on this panel, uh, feel free to uh, either on Zoom, give us a wave, uh, put something in on Q&A, or if you're on Facebook, feel free to drop a question if you have it. I just wanted to say that before we move, we've got a couple other folks uh, on our panel that are going to give some information for us too. So um, Marge, would you mind talking with us about uh, your programs uh, with communication, with leadership, and uh, student programs as well? Thanks, Megan. I appreciate it. Um, so I teach the communication classes Almost any degree in the state of Kansas requires that you take public speaking. So obviously, um, almost all students take that. I highly recommend you take that at a smaller institution like ICC. Instead of um, some of the larger institutions, you do it in a very large classroom and then you have a graduate teaching assistant um, listening to speeches and at ICC, you get that hands-on help and assistance and community, so it's a much preferable we offer a full range though, of communication classes, mass communication and interpersonal communication. Um, we're also working on a, uh, an internship for both communication and leadership, where we'll be able to place people in the community um, to learn and improve their communication and leadership skills in a hand-on way. Um, we have right now one formal leadership class that we offer that is very interactive, all of the classes in this um, genre um, are really about kind of self-examination. What kind of leader am I? What kind of leader do I want to be? We have panelists come in from the community every week to discuss with students and students do a personal project. So we've had students create upper fields. We've had students do face painting at Neowalla, um, just a wide range of things. And so it's a really uh, nice interactive opportunity for students to meet people in the community and take on their own passion projects. I also am really fortunate to um, be an advisor for student government. And so one of the things students are often very interested in is can they be in student government? And it's really cool this year, our student government just passed a change to their bylaws where any student who wants to be a part of student government can self-nominate and become a part of it. So if you're active in student government now in your high school, and you want to continue that there are many pathways to student government um, and it's really cool because our student government is present on the president's advisory council um, they're they're asked for input from faculty from senate um, so they really do make a difference and so there's many many opportunities here at icc to kind of expand your understanding of theory and then put that to very practical work Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, with communications leadership with those student programs, there are um, a vast number of ways that students can be involved on campus. Um, and that's something that most of our students through just their general studies are going to come in contact with, which is um, really fortunate and great. So thanks, Merch. Um, and Bridget, our Jill of all trades, uh, we will kind of close out this part of it anyway with you. Would you mind uh, giving us kind of a rundown of what it is that you um, do on campus, the things that you interact with, and um, where things stand for you this semester and going into the fall? Sure, most of what I do is development English education. And one of the things I'm hearing all of my fabulous peers talk about is something that I think ICC does really brilliantly. and that's taking a student's path and helping them figure it out and design it for them. And in developmental education, both for English and for math, we have, I have a tiny visitor, um, we have an opportunity to provide tremendous personal attention. So if you are a student who's coming to us or you have a student who you're thinking about recommending going somewhere, who has a little, um, I wanna find exactly the right phrase here, who doesn't have great academic confidence, right? They're working through diving into a dry textbook and pulling out the things they need. 
They are building skills for writing effectively in a formal manner that's going to be expected in the academic world. They are, and I'm going to speak uh, the praises of my peer on the math side of the house, Alan Shockley, who is just a kick backside teacher. Uh, we do a really great job of looking at a student who comes to us uh, without the confidence to execute those skills in a college situation and figure out how to help design a practice that gets them ready while they're still participating in the community and building their confidence. It's, which is more I find after having, this is my sixth year teaching developmental English. And the longer I'm in it, the more I see it's not so much that students don't know what they need to do. It's that they've so convinced themselves that they're bad at it. They have to relearn that part. Um, that's something we're really good at at ICC. Um, and, and I love that. Uh, and I get to work in all of these different departments and lend a hand here or there. I get to sing in the choir and not just be my student's teacher, but also be their peer, uh, which makes me be a better teacher. I get to play in the band. I am chomping at the bit to play in the orchestra. Uh, I had the wonderful opportunity to compose pieces for these ensembles and, and get to hand over this thing I've made to someone else and see what they do with it which is uh, both terrifying and a great joy. So um, I get to help in the theater department. Like we run wonderful 24 hour high school plays and I've gotten to stay up all night with Dr. Petruca and guide high school playwrights um, as they're working. It's, it's just, I, I get to play, this year I played bass drum in the band. It was fantastic fun. So ICC is a, a really fantastic place where community really gets to be community. There are places where your teachers are your teachers and there are places where your teachers are also pushing the same rock you're pushing, which is wonderful. That's a really lovely way to put that. Thank you, Bridget. You're welcome. Um, we we are and i i've said this i don't know how many times we're a nest for those students that really need that and we're a springboard for the ones that are coming in we we can meet you where you're at um we have a wonderful um tutoring center we have great resources any of these faces that you see on here have office hours they will pay attention to you they will interface with you um, we hear stories about that constantly um, that students are reaching out to their professors and their professors reach back and um, that that really is part of the ICC difference. Um, you get that personalized experience, which is fabulous. Um, so we do have a few questions and I'll go ahead and start with those. So initially, Larry, this one is for you. The first two are for you actually, if you wanna just stay on for those. I'll ask them back to back and you can address them both. So first we have, when is the band going back to turbos? And secondly, is there a plan to start a marching band? Well, can you hear me okay? So turbos, we will be back as soon as we can run about six rehearsals and Tony wants us in there. So That's sooner fantastic. than later, yes, yeah, sooner than later is the answer for turbos. And um, I'll be at turbos tonight at open. But anyway, <laughs> on, a, on a side note, um, marching band, yes, I would love to start a full-size marching band. It's really just about getting the numbers to be here. Uh, one thing I'm going to try to do in the fall is invite a different high school from the region to come to each of our fo home football games and um, just to kind of let people know what we're trying to do here. Uh, for those of you who do not know, I have an extensive background in the marching arts. I taught uh, two of the top ranked DCI corps of all time, the Cadets and the Carolina Crown. And um, I had a marching band from New Jersey that finished um, in the top 14 in the United States at Bands of America Grand Nationals in 2012, in, when, in which we won the National Esprit de Corps Award. Um, that was the year of Hurricane Sandy. And even though we didn't rehearse for 10 days, our kids put, pulled it together 
um, and we went out and were the highest scoring East Coast band in the history of Bands of America. So yes, I would love to have a full-size marching band. It's one of my goals. Great answer. And um, I'm sure you will not be at Turbos by yourself. There will be folks ready and waiting, chomping at the bit. So uh, we can't wait to have you guys back and performing there. Um, that is such a unique experience for our students to have that kind of gig experience where they're uh, performing for an audience. They're having to get something ready for a performance on a regular basis. Um, as a performer, that's just something that's invaluable. Uh, speaking of performances, our next question we have is uh, do you have to be a theater major to do performances? So uh, Paige and or Paul, feel free to take it away on that one. Okay, I can answer part and you can answer part, Paul. Anything I miss, go ahead and grab it. Um, anybody can participate in the theater program. We welcome everybody. The exciting thing is, and Paul can address this, in his acting one class this last year, he had several, a couple of football players, a couple of athletes, and of course the theater students. So everybody is welcome to take them. Everybody is also welcome to audition for our upcoming productions. Um, for anybody who is interested, we can offer them a scholarship. Um, we just need, Paul and I need, just need to see them come audition or read a little bit or something. They can send in a videotape, um, tape. <laughs> they can send a video recording and uh, we'll get in touch with them. And the other th exciting thing is, you, if you are interested in, in majoring in something else, you can still get a scholarship in theater. Uh, you just need to come and participate in the productions. That's all we ask. Yeah, so just to kind of piggyback on that, um, thanks Paige. I, I did have uh, in my acting one uh, last semester, I had two football players and two uh, basketball players, as well as our core theater folks. And the wonderful thing about that um, was that everybody came in at a very different level. And throughout the, the entire semester, each, they all learned from each other, as well as me. You know, the, 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 the wonderful thing about theater and the wonderful thing that, that it brings to you is this sense of ensemble, you know, working collaboratively and observing each other's process, um, you know, from the very first time that some of these, you know, a couple of these athletes who, who had never performed at all had to stand up in front of the room and do a monologue, it, you know, you could tell they were absolutely terrified. But the wonderful thing was that we really created just such a safe space that by the end, I mean, these guys were were up there and it, and it just became this wonderful experience, I think, for all of them. And it translates to more than just being an actor, right? Much like public speaking with what, what you know, Marge does, it gives you that confidence to stand in front of a room and, uh, and do whatever it is you have to do, whether it's give a speech, do an interview, all that kind of stuff. It feeds all of those things. Great, thank you, Paige and Paul, for the information on that. Uh, Follow-up question on that, we did have a question on what are theater classes like? So you touched on a little bit of that. Would either of you guys like to elaborate on uh, what that looks like to be in a class? Yeah, we both can. Um, as I mentioned before, I, I specialize not only in acting, but also in uh, playwriting and developing scripts. So um, what's, what's really, really fun is in the spring, we have a playwriting class where everyone writes a 10 minute play. And then in the fall, we produce those plays on stage and the directing class gets to direct those plays that have just been written. Because in truth, a play isn't complete until it's up on stage. So that's just one of the many exciting things we offer the directing and the playwriting. And of course, the acting classes, everybody loves those. And Paul can address some of the classes that he teaches. Yeah, so um, aside from the, 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 what I would consider the, the straight acting classes, um, you know, in, in my mind's eye, a theater class, an acting class is not just the, the text work you do with, with the plays, but it's also your voice and it's also your physical body, your movement. So two other classes that I teach are voice and movement. Um, and, you know, with movement, we cover everything from period movement 
to clowning, to comedia, uh, working into doing tumbling and stage combat, uh, just a, a, a variety of ways that, that, we, uh, that we learn how to use our bodies to tell stories, as well as our minds and our mouths. So um, there's a lot of opportunity. They're all really fun. Um, and uh, uh, I, hope, I hope to see a whole bunch of people join. <laughs> if I could also add uh, really quick, we do have uh, an incoming uh, technical director and we're thrilled about that. Any student that's interested in any aspect of design, whether it's lighting or set design or even costume design, uh, this fabulous person that we have coming in is going to be able to guide them. And it's at a community college level, and Bridget mentioned this earlier, you get a chance to do things that perhaps you can't at the four year. Actually, I think it was Marge that said that. Um, you get a chance to design things. If that's your interesting interest, you can design a light plot for heaven's sake for our shows and we'll take it. And you will have this incredible thing that you can put on your resume and take with you when you get to these four years. Um, it's the same with directing and writing a play. These are things that most people don't get a chance to do until their junior, senior year. And we're giving you a chance to do them as a freshman and sophomore. So it's very, very exciting. Anybody who's in, interested in technical things, we got you covered. Great, thank you very much, Paige. Um, this last question we've got before we start wrapping up uh, is for both Larry and Alexis. Uh, we had a question on uh, what scholarships are available for band and choir. I guess I'll start real quick. Um, so basically for non-majors, if you perform in at least a few of our ensembles, we could get you tuition and book coverage. Um, if you were to be a music major, we can enhance that through scholarships through the ICC Foundation. And we also have work study opportunities. And I'll turn it over to Alexis as well for the vocal side. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same on the vocal side. Um, I think, um, probably the scariest part of the audition process is, of course, the audition itself. Um, so what I'm, and Larry, you can um, tag on here with what um, submissions you're looking for. For vocal scholarships, um, I am just looking for two contrasting um, recordings of two contrasting pieces. They can be accompanied or unaccompanied. Um, it can be a, a piece that you were um, uh, preparing to perform at um, contest or that you performed at contest in the past. Um, it could be an excerpt from something that you've been, um, that your choir has been working on. Um, it can even be a pop song as long as you feel that it um, displays your range and um, and your capabilities. Um, and you can find all of this on, um, you can find the form online or um, you can email me directly um, if you have questions about how to audition for it. Um, uh, do you want to take over, Larry? Yeah, the instrumental audition is very similar. It's it's low key, literally and figuratively. Uh, basically, we just want to hear you play a couple of excerpts, maybe something from your folder. Uh, if you could show off on a scale or two to show the range, that's great. You don't have to. And also, uh, there's the link available, or you can email me a short video via YouTube or MP4, or you can um, send something to my phone, and that that could we can do a video audition. Uh, I'm, I've already actively had a few auditions over the past month. Yeah, it's it's very low pressure. Um, it's you know, just the thought of auditioning for anything can be really terrifying, but um, we try to make it as smooth and stress free for you as possible. Yeah. All right, that sounds really accessible. I'm um, glad to know that you guys are open to that. Uh, enjoyed the uh, wise crack there, Larry. That was a good one. Um, <laughs> all right. 
Well, um, we are going to be getting ready to wrap up here. If you have additional questions, we will continue to answer those on Facebook. So feel free to drop those in the comments if you have anything else. Um, Arts and Letters, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for connecting with your community, with your students. Uh, this has been a really fantastic experience to have, and we look forward to having more pirate chats as we go forward.